So in this one, we're going to add getbootstrap.com to our project or bootstrap. Another name for it is Twitter Bootstrap. It's made by some guys from Twitter. Uh, it's an open source front end framework, which basically means that we can build the way uh, our website looks a lot faster and easier. And that's how uh, to do it with Bootstrap. Um, so just click on getting started and we're going to scroll down and we're going to use the CDN. And I want to note that 3.2.0 is what we're going to be using for this one. And um, so go ahead and copy all of these files here. I'm going to copy them and I'm going to go into my base.html. I'm just going to paste those in for now and save them. But then what I actually want to do is I want to scroll down um, to examples and I want to grab one of these in here and use this code instead. So for the e-commerce one, um, I'm going to go down to the fixed nav bar right here. So fixed as in fixed at the top. So it's always going to have the navigation bar at the top. Um, or you could do uh, the nav bar like this where it just stays there, but it's not necessarily fixed at the top. It's going to be a default one. Um, so and it, as you also notice that it is responsive. Um, so you could either do fixed at the top or have it static at the top. So let's actually stick with static at the top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to view this page source. So go ahead and right click or control click if you're on a Mac. Go to view page source and we're just going to copy all of this stuff here. So just go ahead and, and select everything. Go to copy it all. And in here below this stuff, I'm going to paste it in. And I'm going to scroll up. And now with the style sheet, I'm going to actually cut this one. So we're using bootstrap.min. So I need to look for the next bootstrap.min, which is this right here. So I'm actually going to paste that in right there. All right. And then the next one is bootstrap theme. Um, we might not see a bootstrap theme. So let's actually just paste this in. And I do see that there's this one called static bar top, which is not something that we've actually brought in yet. So I'm going to tab that one in. Uh, so let's actually grab that direct link by coming back into this code and clicking on the link itself. Uh, another way to do it is to copy link, copy link address, and then we'll go in here and replace this with that new link address. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm actually setting up our code to work with code that they have that's already live. So we're not going to actually use our settings um, code just quite yet. Like we're not going to store this CSS and JavaScript just quite yet. Instead, we're going to use their actual live code. Copy that link address for all of them. Paste that here. Copy this. Paste it here. All right, now our JavaScript, we're going to cut this and we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and we see bootstrap min.js. So right above that is this one. All right, so let's cut this, tab that in, and let's just make sure that it is using version two. So let's go ahead and click on it and we see version 3.2.0. That's what we want. So if we actually go to our max CDN uh, without those first slashes. Just go ahead and copy that. Paste that in. It's the same code. So it's 3.2 and 3.2. That's exactly what we want. Okay, so now that we have that, let's actually remove this H1 way up there and scroll down a little bit. And we are going to put it into this Jumbotron right there. So all you did was replace some text, some code and all that. So ours will have bootstrap working on our site. So what we should see in a second is when we refresh this, it should look like this, but instead of nav bar example, it'll stay, say hello, anonymous user. So if we do a refresh, hop, we need to make sure our server is running, of course. So Python manage.py run server. Uh, make sure that you are in the main root of the project. So Python manage.py run server and I'm gonna hit command K to clear everything out servers running I do a refresh and boom it is exactly the same I mean some of the coloring is a little different um, and that could be because of my cache or whatever but it's the same stuff so if we do this it changes with everything which is great that's what we want to see um, all right, so that is pretty cool. So now we have Bootstrap is actually working 
So I actually want to show you some things of what's cool about these templates and how we can continue to be smart about using Django's templates. So going in here, I'm gonna look for this nav bar. So nav bar is what they call their navigation bar, right? So all this stuff up here. And we can see in here, it says project name, home, about, contact. I mean, you might not know what everything is, what it means and how to change it, but you can see that, hey, this white text right here, I could probably change a lot of this stuff and it will change for me. So if I change home to welcome and project name to CFE e-commerce, and I go back into Chrome and refresh, I see, oh, look, I just changed that and welcome. Perfect. That's 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 something that's nice about HTML and you can play around with it a lot and kind of change things. And we see drop down here. So back in here, it says drop down. So how about pull down and pull down, right? So like, I definitely encourage you to play around with this because if you don't know HTML that well, uh, it might look intimidating at first, but Luckily, with Sublime Text, it changes the color of each thing, right? So, like, the white is stuff that you probably can change. But do keep in mind, if you make a mistake, like if I accidentally deleted those things and came back in here and refreshed, I might see errors come up, or I might not. Uh, sometimes it doesn't actually show them. But let's make for sure that an error is going to come up. And by doing that, look at that, that other code went away, even though it's still there. So we bring it back. Some browsers are smart and they fix some of those errors in that code. Some browsers are not smart and will not fix that. Like, like Chrome in some cases will recognize, oh, hey, like a new link has started so we can ignore the fact that this other link was removed for some reason, right? So Chrome and, and Safari will be smart with stuff like that. So just keep that in mind. Firefox too, probably. Um, so sometimes you will have errors in your HTML and that's okay. Um, just make sure that you're looking through in here that the errors are minimal um, and sublime text again makes it a little bit easier to see if there is an error like if you just do that it highlights that hey you messed up somehow or if you did something like that it might not show that the error is there but it, it it's getting better as as it goes too so just keep that in mind Okay, but what we want to do is we actually, like I said, want to be smarter about these templates. So instead of having the nav bar inside of this base.html, I want to include it in, but I don't want it to be actually there. So the code itself. So I'm going to cut it out of here and just do include navbar.html. So this include tag is pretty cool. It allows us to include any other template that we want. So let's see that in action. I have to create the new file for this nav bar. So I'm going to save it inside of templates. I'm going to add navbar.html, paste that in, everything that I just cut. Uh, if for some reason you didn't save it correctly, you can always go back to the source and just copy all of that stuff there and paste that in. All right, so now let's actually take a look at our new one. Now that I did this include and I refresh in here, it looks exactly the same as it should, because all I did was replace the code with the code. I mean, I didn't change a whole lot by using include. Now, if I change the location of include, well, it might make some differences. So if we change it, ah, it pulls it down there, right? So that is kind of cool, but now all I'm doing is replacing one line instead of a bunch of lines and allowing me to kind of change things on the fly, which is really cool. That's something that's really nice um, about using Django's templates. So the next thing that I would want to mention is something called blocks. Blocks are really cool. So we are gonna introduce blocks now and um, we'll do that in the next one because it's it should be its own self-contained lecture. Uh, but what we have here is blocks allow us to inherit from another template. So let's actually get started with that right now.